Hello, and thanks for tuning in. Today we wanted to look at the $70 Rolex Challenger, the Invicta Pro Diver series. This watch is a homage to the Rolex Submariner, I believe. Um, in, in a lot of ways it is similar, so it does receive a lot of hate from the Rolex community. So I've seen a lot of reviews on this watch, either people love it or they absolutely hate it. So I've been wearing mine for probably two weeks or so. Let me double check when I purchased this watch. Purchased this watch on March 23rd, 2021. It's now April 5th. So I've been wearing it for just a little over a month, uh, working, not really trying to be too careful with it. I did bump it a few times. Um, no scratches on the crystal and the band has very little scratches so we'll take a closer look at it as you can see here it's got a cyclops with about a two and a half times magnification two to two and a half it's very clear centered looks good we have a rotating bezel which rotates counterclockwise it has about a half of a click backlash on it uh, not, it's not too bad. We have the Mercedes hour hand, just like a Rolex. The second hand with the Invicta counterweight symbol. That's your standard minute hand. Then you have Invicta with the Invicta logo back here. Automatic professional. It's uh, water resistant to 660 feet, 200 meters. I have showered with this. Um, got it wet, got it soaking wet. As long as your crown is screwed down, I think you'll be okay. There was no issues there. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the light so you can see the loom. So it does have decent luminescent. It's not super bright and it doesn't stay lit for too long. It does dim out, so don't count on the luminescent doing anything great for you. Another thing I can say about the watch is it's a mineral glass, so it will get scratched if you do hit it on something hard. Um, the inside area is very clean looking. There's no dust in there, so care was taken to assemble this watch. Let me get it off stand here so we can see it. And as you see, it is a pretty nice watch. It does have the Invicta logo right along the side there. It's engraved. It has the Swiss crown there. The bezel is a little tight, but it has a nice click to it. And it does line up perfectly. see there and like I said it's got about a half a minute backlash on it which isn't too bad so we'll get it off here and we'll look at the back actually before we do that we'll look at the clasp this is just a standard friction type clasp it works very well holds the watch very securely this watch does come large, so I did take out a few links from my wrist and it does fit fine. So let me get it off so we can see the back. Okay, I took one of the pins out of the watch band so that I could open it up and lay it flat and we can see the movement here. And this is a NH35A, also known as an NH35, also known as a Seiko movement. Um, this is an unbranded Seiko S2 caliber movement. Um, they do sell it to many different watch companies and many watch companies use them. It is a workhorse type movement. Very good. And as you can see here, Invicta decided to have a colored counterweight. They wanted to color theirs yellow. And as you see, it's the NH35 S2 Seiko Invicta watch company since 1837. And it does have beat correction and speed correction here. 
which this watch gained about 20 seconds over a day, so it's well within the spec, negative 20 to positive 40. So I will probably adjust this in a later video to slow the time down just a hair. It is a see-through back watch here. And again, it is a Seiko NH35 movement. We'll go through real quick. That's a 21,600 beats per hour. 53 degrees at the lift angle. It's got a dash lock shock system. The power reserve is 41 hours. It's a bi-directional winding. So either way the counterweight spins, it will wind the watch. It does have hacking. It is windable by the crown. The manual winding is counterclockwise. So this movement holds hours, minutes, seconds, and the date number calendar. This is a Japanese movement assembled in Malaysia. That's how this watch is. If you look up here, it'll say, let me see if I can get that in focus. There we go. Japanese movement assembled in Malaysia. So this is a definitely a good movement for the watch. Um, it is waterproof. A lot of people hate on it. I did break down how much this watch would cost if you were to try to build it yourself. The movement alone is $40. So the watch right now online sells for about $78, bucks, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, currently you can get the, the watch for about $78. So if you were to buy just this movement alone, it'd be around 40 bucks. Then a stainless steel band is another 20 bucks. So you're 60 bucks already, and you haven't even gotten a mineral dial or a mineral glass or anything yet. So the value that you get in this watch is astonishing. It, it's performed flawlessly. Uh, actually, I was out and it got mistaken for a Rolex. Somebody said, nice Rolex, and I had to tell them that it was an Invicta. And they were super impressed by the quality and the look of it. And everybody seems to say it's a nice watch. I've had no issues with it. So for 78 bucks, I can go in the water with this thing. If I get it banged up, I'm not going to cry about it. So we'll look at some more of the features on here. does have micro adjustments on the band it is all stainless steel like I said I've been wearing it for a few days or a, a month so it does have scratches and I've been working in it the glass is fine like I said it's it's a very smooth movement I've had it off for about two days and the power reserve was still running and overall it is definitely a good buy so I'll go through some of the specs that online shows a 40 millimeter case. It's 14 millimeters thickness. So 14 millimeters thick. The case is 40 millimeters. It weighs 155 grams. Mineral case, screw down crown. It says unidirectional bezel, but it only moves one way, so I don't I don't think this is unidirectional. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But yeah, overall, I think this is a good watch. And it is a $70 competitor to the Rolex. Now the Rolex does have a better water rating on this. And I don't know anybody that's actually going to be diving down to 200 meters or 660 feet. Very few people are going to do that. So to have this watch for a fraction of the cost and for the amount that you get with this watch is a pretty good deal. So I think this is a great watch. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.